Lincoln here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you what I feel is a pretty cool looking and reasonably priced pen from Paniter, and that would be the Avatar UR Black Edition. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this interesting Paniter, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Pen Chalet for providing this pen for review. Now, I have previously reviewed a couple of different versions of the Avatar. Uh, there was the standard model, which had a nice blue resin, and then there was the UR Demonstrator, which was a clear demonstrator with silver hardware. But now we have the Black Edition. Uh, it's available in six different versions. There is the Amber, Clear Demonstrator, Glossy Black, Matte Black, Sky Blue, and Wine Red. It arrives appropriately enough in this black cardboard box. The top lifts off. Inside, appropriately enough, there is a nice little uh, use and care guide which carries over the black theme with black paper and a white text. Uh, and then we have the pen. Uh, the tray is slightly angled, which you don't see that often. And here is the pen, the Paniter Avatar UR Black Edition. And this is the clear demonstrator. Uh, Paniter names a number of their pens after films. Uh, they have pens like Full Metal Jacket or Back to the Future, and they recently released one called Psycho. Uh, this pen here is named after the largest grossing film of all time, Avatar. While the special effects were amazing for 2009, the actual plot of the film was widely regarded to be extremely cliche, with stereotyped characters, and overall it wasn't necessarily a memorable film. But everyone went to go see it, hence it being the box office champion. Uh, there are a total of four sequels planned here in the near future. Uh, I'm curious to see how well the sequels are received. Since the effects used in the film are pretty much commonplace now, uh, it will be interesting to see what angle the director James Cameron comes up with to draw people into the theater. Uh, okay, enough film talk. Let's take a look at a pen. The UR in the name of this pen stands for Ultra Resin, which is the material used for the cap and the barrel. It is very stiff and extremely durable. Uh, there are several videos out there of folks driving cars over these pens or performing other strength tests like hitting them with a hammer. While I have heard them described to be unbreakable, I wouldn't go that far. Durable, yes. Unbreakable, well, with enough force, just about anything in this world can be broken. But the material is very strong and feels uh, like quality material. Uh, as the name would imply, the trim on this pen is black. Um, it is assembled with a technology Paniter calls glueless. Uh, the entire pen is assembled without a single drop of glue. Uh, each component slots into the next. Uh, you can find videos of Dante Del Vecchio completely disassembling these pens and putting them back together again. Uh, let's take a look at the cap. Uh, the end is rounded and bisected by the clip, which wraps around the top. I like how you can see all the inner workings of this clip uh, with the spring, uh, and then it provides you with a good look at the nib and the section as well. On the inside of the cap near the nib, there are three rings which serve to provide a little visual diversity. I like them. Uh, on my review of the original Avatar model, which was an opaque resin, I didn't particularly care for the looks of the pin at the end of the cap, which is a fulcrum for the clip. That pen doesn't bother me here on this model because with it being black, it really blends in well and you really don't even notice it. Um, I like the arched plumed clip uh, and it has a bit of flair that I care for. Uh, and now at the very top of this clip, it has a little notch and that edge is rather sharp. Um, I'm not quite sure of the purpose of this little notch. When you operate the hinged clip, it doesn't act as a stop or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure why it's there, but it's something to be aware of just because it could get caught on some clothing or, or scratch you if you're not paying attention. It's not the biggest issue, but just something to be on the lookout for. The cap is straight and it transitions into a wide cap band. On the band, it says Paniter and surrounding the name is the skyline of Florence, including the Duomo. 
There is a small step down from the cap to the barrel. Uh, the edge of the metal band is slightly sharp. Um, I recall this being sharper on previous models, so I feel this has been uh, improved a bit on this particular pen. The barrel tapers down until you reach the end, which is rounded with an end cap of a black plated metal. Now, typically, I'm not a fan of clear demonstrators with converters. Uh, converters aren't especially attractive, and in demonstrators, they tend to stick out like a sore thumb. With the overall theme of this pen being black and the black trim on the converter, I feel it's aesthetically pleasing enough to not bug me. Although there is one aspect of the converter I would change, and I'll show you that here in a moment. The cap is magnetic. I feel it has an appropriate amount of strength to it. Um, on some Paniter models, the magnetic caps are self-centering, meaning that however you orient the cap, the magnet will rotate the cap to a particular orientation. That's not the case here with this avatar. Uh, in regard to the magnet, something I see as a positive is that the magnet appears to be coated, which is nice. Uh, in theory, this should mean that the magnet will be less susceptible to rusting. Um, I've had magnets on other pens rust out on me before, so anything to prevent that is appreciated. Uh, another thing in regard to the magnet, the inner ring of the cap has been redesigned. Uh, this is the original avatar. You can see here that there was a thin metal lock ring which held the magnet on the cap in place. The edge of this ring was rather sharp and it extended past the edge of the magnet. Um, as I used that pen, I experienced a number of scratches on the metal section and some scuffs on the barrel from posting. Uh, this is the original avatar you are, and you can see that the uh, piece is there, but it's no longer extended past the edge of the magnet. So this was an improvement, which helped reduce that scratching. Now, on this UR Black Edition, you can see here the piece is gone altogether, and there's just a ridge. So you can see how the design has changed and improved over time. And it's nice to see that Paniter has worked to address design elements of their pens, which were not ideal. Once the cap is removed, underneath you have this number six stainless steel nib. I believe Panada uses Bach nibs. I think the black looks really sharp on this nib and really works well with the overall black theme of this model. It's a bit tough to see here, but it has Paniter stamped on one side and then on the other side, the text is reversed. Uh, it's a unique imprint. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a large flare, then angles up until you reach a medium-sized step up to the barrel. While this section is metal and fairly slick, I tend to grip my pens close to the end of the section, and in the case of this pen, the large flare does a really good job of helping me maintain a solid grip. Now, if you grip your sections a little bit further back, then that slickness might come more into play for you. The cap does post, and it does post securely. While it is fairly light, and I don't feel it backweights the pen or throws off the balance, uh, the edge of the cap band does rub against my hand, and it is a little sharp, so I find posting this pen not to be the most comfortable for my hands. Um, I prefer to use this pen unposted, and it's plenty long enough to do so comfortably. Um, as I discussed previously, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges, and a converter is provided. Um, I did try to eyedropper this pen, and it didn't necessarily uh, work that well. It seemed like it was leaking from some areas, and I couldn't necessarily identify those. I think some of that has to do with the fact that there's no adhesive used uh, in the construction of these pens. So I wouldn't recommend eyedropping these pens. Uh, I mentioned there was a couple of things about the converter that bugged me, uh, and I will admit it's very nitpicky. But on the exterior of the converter, there is a little uh, ink level gauge. Now, I'm not quite sure why you need a little gauge there when you could just see the level. So I'm not quite sure what the purpose for adding that was. Uh, but then when the converter is inserted, the eye in ink is not visible, which bugs me a little bit. Uh, like I said, those are very nitpicky things which don't affect the overall performance of this pen at all. The Paniter Avatar UR Black Edition line is currently on sale at Pen Chalet for $126, which I feel is a very reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. Um, it feels like quality materials, and as you'll see in the writing sample, it performs nicely as well. And I'm always a sucker for clear demonstrators. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and the aforementioned writing sample.
So here we go with some size comparisons for the Paniter Avatar UR Black Edition. Uh, and this is the only other Paniter I have in my collection, which is the Carbon Fiber La Grande Bellezza. Uh, and then, in regard to a number of other clear demonstrator pens, uh, this is what it looks like with a Twisby Vax 700, that's the Iris edition. And here it is with a Narwhal clear demonstrator. And then in regard to a few other clear demonstrators, this is an Opus 88. And then here is a Conklin All-American, which I need to review here in the near future. And then here's a pen that you don't see that often, which is a Lamy Vista, which is basically the uh, clear version of the Lamy Safari. In regard to uncapped comparisons, um, this is what it looks like with the Opus 88. And then here it is with the Lamy Vista. And then finally, here it is with the Vax 700 Iris. So here we go with the writing sample for the Paniter. And this is the Avatar. You are and this is the black edition. This is a medium stainless steel nib, and the ink that I'm using here today, appropriately enough, is Paniter Turquoise. This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a nice turquoise with a bit of shading to it. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Visconti turquoise. Uh, it's a little bit lighter than that. And then here it is with Papier Plume's Peacock Blue, which is a little bit lighter than the, uh, the Paniter. This is what the bottle looks like. I believe it's an 80 milliliter bottle. Uh, nice wide neck there, so it's a nice bottle and some nice ink. Here we go with the rest of the writing sample. This, this nib is very nice. Uh, it's fairly smooth with a little bit of feedback to it. I'd say it's fairly stiff. You're not going to get a lot of live variation. I was pushing rather hard there and you really didn't get much at all. Um, in regard to ink flow, for this medium nib, I feel that it's decent. And in regard to reverse writing, You can see here that it reverse writing necessarily didn't uh, isn't necessarily the thing for this particular pen. In regard to some fast writing, the feed had no issue in keeping up. So here we have the Paniter Avatar UR Black Edition. Um, I'm always a sucker for clear demonstrators, and this one is very interesting. I think it's very reasonably priced, uh, and I think the looks are pretty sharp on it as well. So it's something well worth checking out. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.